92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5. Audio and soon-to-be video, which will be on RTC Channel 4. That's why Scott is back in the studio. Hi, Scott. Good morning, Tom. Hey, nice to have you with us again. Good to be here. You do have your own coffee cup now, right? I do, That's sir. good. I'm glad to hear that because that's, uh, that is important around here, no doubt about it. I'm looking up. All right. <laughs> You'll get there as well. That's Dr. Thome. He's here to talk our Doc Talk radio show. And quick reminder as we go through the course of the program, if you have a question, give us a call here in the studio. 223-6059. Email us, WROI at RTCOL.com. You can post it right on our Facebook page as well. Good morning. Nice to have you with us. Hey, good morning. You are, of course, from Rochester Surgical Services. Yes, sir. All right. And, and I note a fellow of the American College of Surgeons. What does that mean? That means that once you've gone to residency and gotten your diploma to be a surgeon, uh, you can go out and operate... But actually, if you are mentored by a certain types of surgeons and they sign off and say, hey, you're really a good surgeon. We want you to join the, the group in, the, in America, uh, and which stands for quality surgery and education. Okay. Make sure you're up to date. And so uh, not everybody is uh, a fellow of American College of Surgeons. Okay. Well, nice to have you with us. And of course... Today's topic, as uh, we've been talking about, is going to be kind of the veins, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, it won't be real long, but uh, right. hopefully I'll answer right. questions that people have at home about vein disease. And to start out, just with the basics. Yeah, what are veins? Yeah. So <laughs> the arteries go from the heart to the feet and, and the digits, and okay. the veins are the vessels that bring the blood back to the heart. And so... Arteries do not have any valves in them. They're just tubes. But veins have these one-way valves. So the blood goes through the valve, but it's not supposed to go backwards. So with gravity, okay. if you stand up, the veins, as your the muscles in your legs push, it pushes the blood back up towards your heart, but it's not supposed to go backwards. So today we're going to talk about varicose veins, and that's okay. when those valves break or become dysfunctional. We have a lot of veins. Yes, Almost millions, okay. you could say. So, uh, and the bigger ones have valves, and the smaller ones don't. But uh, the point is, is when those valves start breaking, then those veins dilate, and that's what varicose veins are. So there's everything from spider veins, which are the very small veins that you see on your skin, to uh, the large varicose veins, which are the ropey ones. Okay, and basically. The spider veins or the medium-sized disease can be taken care of by sclerosine, which is a, a medication that you inject into those veins. Directly into the veins. Right. Okay. To destroy them. And then when they get bigger, that's more of a surgical disease. So we either uh, take them out surgically or take out the major reflux, the major veins uh, higher up in the leg. And we can do that with laser or surgical uh, techniques too. And at Woodlawn Hospital, we have the lasers to do that now. Okay, so good. this is brand new. And so Woodlawn Hospital is the place to go for vein surgery right now. Are there other vein diseases? You're talking about varicose veins and things like that. Is there more that can happen, unfortunately, to the veins? Uh, there's a few, but they're very okay. rare. And uh, the whole thought is, like most things in surgery, you can... You can operate, put a new thing in, like right. transplant, but right. veins, they've shown through the years, you really can't put a new vein in. It just doesn't work very well. So there's so many veins, like you said, there's millions of them that if you cut out a vein or uh, destroy it, there's always a collateral that'll go around back towards the heart. So it's usually not a big issue. Obviously, there's two major veins in the leg and you don't want to knock off both of them because that would be that cause a lot of swelling and sure problems. Would. You'd still live with it, but it wouldn't be a, a good idea. We're talking about uh, veins and uh, vein disease, vein surgery. Now, this the surgery you're talking about that that's uh, state of the art now. That's the newest thing on the market, right? Yes. So if you had like these ropey veins on your lower leg, and at the end of the day, you have the swelling and the pain. What we can do. Is all we do is put a little needle in near the knee where the big vein is, and we put a laser up 
that needle up towards the groin, and we can laser that entire huge dilated vein with the laser. So with only a needle stick, and, and that's a great technology. So that would be outpatient surgery? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. All vein surgeries, same day. I can't remember the last person who stayed overnight. Wouldn't be any reason to. No. Mm -mm. And they're back to work the next day. Wow, that's excellent. Now, vein surgery has progressed over the years. I'm sure we didn't have all this state-of-the-art thing five years ago or ten years ago. Right. How did we handle it then? Uh, you made little cuts in the groin to tie off the big okay. veins. And there was something called stripping where you had these metal objects that you actually physically strip out those big veins. You got vein disease, vein surgery. How about vein health? Is there such a thing and how do we keep our veins healthy? The answer is probably no. I okay. wish I could say yes. Um, vein disease in general make a, is genetic, which you have nothing you can do about that. Uh, estrogen, women have it more than men, uh, and especially in pregnancy. Uh, the reasons the big, large uterus pushes back on those veins at the upper leg, and, and that causes backflow problems. Uh, there's uh, standing, people who stand a lot, work hard, but they're standing a lot. The, all the back pressure of standing all the time causes varicose veins. And lastly, trauma. Uh, even getting hit hard during football in high school sometimes, later in life, 10 years later, you get varicose veins in that area. I think that's, a, that's kind of an interesting note. A lot of, uh, there's been a lot of attention about football and hits and things like that. And uh, it, it's not necessarily an instantaneous thing. It can linger for a while and crop up later on. Right. So the, even in football or basketball, if you get hit and it breaks Soccer, one of those. Soccer, sure. One of the, just breaks one valve. Uh, that valve, now you got double the pressure on the next valve, and then they start breaking, breaking, breaking in time. When should I come see the doctor? Number one, when you don't like the looks. Okay. Number two, when you have symptoms. And symptoms are, it's usually not bad pain. People say, oh, it's an ache, it's a fullness. Uh, more at the end of the day. Usually in the morning after getting out of bed, they don't have any problems. Do we have veins in our eyes? Yeah, you do, but uh, generally they don't get dilated. Okay, okay. So, so mostly you can expect, what, uh, lower extremity type vein issues? Mostly, uh, I would say 90% of it, uh, due to the gravity. Okay. Uh, your arms, some people have big healthy veins in their arms, but it's usually not an issue. Are all veins the same? Pretty much. Okay. Pretty much. They're just different sizes, yes. And uh, different depths, and some are inside the muscle, some are outside the muscle. They, they act a little different differently, and they all have different names. But it's not important for this show, but some are superficial some are deep and some are called perforating which are okay. between the deep and the superficial and so you are have the ability to uh, figure out which vein needs the attention that's right that's <laughs> right and there's all there's old tests and new tests for that and uh, um, ultrasound is basically the mod modal that really does that diagnosis is that a lengthy test an ultrasound test no less than 15 minutes okay so that would be uh, probably the first place to start, right? Yes, and we can do that right in the clinic. You don't even have to go to the radiology department sometimes. We just do it right there. Doctor, okay, Dr. Keith O'May, he's our guest today. We're talking about vein disease and surgery. And what else would you like to add? Well, uh, I'd like to say that at Woodlawn Hospital, if you come and get a consultation, we can, we can take care of uh, the very minor veins, the uh, spider veins, everything up to the big ropey veins. The one question that everybody has is about insurance. And does insurance pay for it? And the answer is generally yes if it's symptomatic and no if it's not symptomatic. So if it's cosmetic, generally make a generalization, the insurance won't pay for it. Uh, the insurance will always say, well, we want you to raise your legs, put compression hose on, mm and take non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They usually want you to do that for three months. And if that fails, which it always does, <laughs> sorry, but okay. it, and then right. you're a candidate for surgery. But the insurance companies make you go through that. After vein surgery, do I have medications then that I have to follow up with? No, not really. Okay. Uh, there are not. Uh, actually, we tell our patients not to take Motrin or aspirin or anything. It makes you bleed easily because when we do the surgery, we want 
or the lasering, we want things to clot. So, and when these veins clot during the treatment, then your body, your white blood cells come and eat up the vein. So it goes away that way. So your body reacts to the vein surgery as well? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else would you like to add this morning? Anything? Well, that's about it about okay. um, vein surgery. Uh, in I want to make, I didn't say anything about DVT. That's deep vein thrombosis. Let's do that. And, and there's really not, that's not a surgical disease per se. If it gets real bad, sometimes we can put a clip in the big vein in the middle of your belly to prevent blood clots from going to your lungs. Now that's a surgical prevention, but for DVT, the treatment is medications and not surgical. Does obesity have anything to do with vein disease? Yes, mildly, okay. uh, but not not as much as the other things I told told you about okay. earlier. Okay, I'm just curious because they they blame obesity for a lot of different things that uh, happen in the body. So I was curious. It has as a to mild what, effect, but not, effect. It, okay. not as bad okay. as the other. Not as bad as genetics and estrogen. We have specifically been talking about veins, but you are a surgeon, a general surgeon. You do a lot of different kinds of surgeries. Yes, sir. Everything from the neck down to uh, everything in the stomach, uh, intestines, spleen, stomach, liver, gallbladder, hernias. Takes a lot of continuing education, doesn't it? Yes, sir. And I just uh, went out for a week to California for a week of training. And we have to put in many hours of education every year. Are you amazed at how the technology in terms of surgery changes over the years? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's um, there's always advancements, but like we've talked in some of these other uh, shows here on Doc right. Talk, it's the genetic uh, advancements nowadays are just amazing. And that all kind of started, if, if I recall correctly, in the Clinton administration when we started doing the genetic codes and DNAs and things like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And of course, that uh, that helps you a lot as a surgeon, doesn't it? Well, it's more of a it's more of a team approach now. Right. In the old days, and I'm not bragging about general right. surgeons, but they were the ones who discovered everything. They're the ones who gave chemotherapy. They did everything besides <laughs> the family practitioner. Sure. Did part, sure. but, uh, but now it's subspecialized. You have oncologists who deal with the cancer and they give the chemotherapy. And uh, GI does most of the scoping where the general surgeons used to do it in the past. So it's, um, it's really subspecialized. But to answer your question, it's teamwork now. So when you're ill, whatever your illness is, it's usually two or three doctors working on you. So everyone puts their brains together. For one of our listeners who might want to consult with you, do they need to go through their family doctor first? No, uh, you can just call the hospital, call a surgical service and get a consult. 223-2244 is the number I have down here. That is one of them. So many, yes. <laughs> one of many, right? Yes. <laughs> Dr. Thomey, we appreciate your time today. Any thoughts about what you might want to talk about next month? Next month, we are going to talk about cool sculpting, which is really cool. A ah. new technology. You've seen it on TV. It's an apparatus that we put on areas where you want to lose a little fat. It freezes it. It goes away. It is really cool okay. for cool sculpting. Okay. And... Uh, it is available starting next week at Woodlawn Hospital. Outstanding. And uh, I've been, I've had the machine for uh, more than two years, uh, and we're getting everybody on board with it. And that'll be the topic next month, and that'll be fun. Well, for Scott's benefit, you're going to bring something along so you can show us how you cool sculpt here. <laughs> <laughs> sure enough. All right. <laughs> there you All go. Right. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. Thank you, Keith. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Doc Talk Radio here on 92.1 WROI, brought to you, of course, by Woodlawn Hospital.